You know, this month we've been talking about getting clear and present certainty into our thinking and thus in our consciousness and into our lives. We learned what a maverick is and how to have maverick intentions to be bold and brave and independent and inclusive in our thinking, knowing the abundance of the universe is at hand. It's here. It's waiting for us. There's infinite possibilities. And for us to be open at the top and step out of the box into the imagery of what it is we want to demonstrate. We also reminded ourselves about our power and that it comes from knowing who's talking. The divine creative power within, it affects everything we experience. And then we filled our tank with that fuel called imagination. Knowing that being in quarantine does not stop our minds from working. Being out of work does not stop our wisdom from working. Being stuck indoors does not stop our connection with the divine from being there, from working through us, for us, as us. Envisioning what we desire to manifest equals experiencing what we desire to manifest. So now it's time to take mindful action. Michael Beckwith wrote, when you truly have an insight or spiritual awakening, the next step is always action. And, you know, we're always in a state of action. We're breathing, we're processing things in our brain, we're sleeping, we're eating, we're thinking. We're always in a state of action. Yet, we're not always doing it on purpose, with purpose. What could our lives look like if we aligned with our intentions? You know, we plant the seeds of what we want to um, have in our experience with our spiritual practice, whatever that may be. And now we must tend to them. We must water and nourish them just the same as we do with our gardens. We must be in a state with them. Tell the story of them and strategize about them. It's time for a breakthrough for all of us. That moment in time when the impossible becomes possible. It's usually triggered by um, inspiration or your power of decision. Whenever we are shifted, we may have a eureka moment, an aha moment, many things happen to us for a breakthrough. Sometimes it's the chaos of the world that causes, uh, that triggers that breakthrough that shifts us in consciousness, in mind, and in, in intention. Raymond Charles Barker wrote, success or failure cannot be explained by anything other than the use and misuse of mental processes. The subconscious mind produces what we place in it it is a creative process. It is a law of action. A law of action. We want action to be taken. We want a reaction to be taken. We need to give an action. Now, there are three keys to a breakthrough, and I'm going to tell you them from the least important to the most important. Now, it doesn't mean that they aren't all important. But the first one I want to talk about is strategy or plan. Now that's the action we take, right? We make plans of action. Well, I'm going to, um, I'm looking for work. I'm going to uh, um, get myself on Indeed.com or, or one of those kind of uh, things. I'm going to um, call my allies and people I know in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. And that's like that for anything we want to take action. If we want to get a new car, we're going to go out there and look for one. We're not just going to sit and imagine one, although that's good. We do our part with what we can control. The ins and outs of the high of the how how it shows up 
is the purview of the universe. That's strategy. That's number three. Number two is story. What's the vision? What's the belief about this idea that we have that eventually we're going to use some strategy to bring into our lives? What is the what and why of our idea? What are we telling ourselves about why we are desiring this? What's our reasoning? What's our purpose in having this vision of what it is we want to manifest? When we have that purpose, when we know that purpose, when the story of that idea is clear in our minds, it shows up. Change your story. Change your life. And number one is state. Now, I'm not talking about California or Nevada or Missouri or whatever. I'm talking about the state of your being, the state of your mind, feelings and emotions in your life, your perceptions and attitudes. You know, there are many billionaires in this world, if we want to talk about money, there are many billionaires in this world that are not happy, do not have happy lives. They have fun things. They may have an ease of sorts because this money can get them here and there, buy them things. But so too many of them are just pissed off and frustrated. So what does that money do? do? It actually, in many ways, it feeds that pissed offness and frustration. Because now you can afford to be pissed off and frustrated in a different way than if you had less money. But it doesn't change anything because they're billionaires. You may not be happy all the time, like some people. But you can always know that there's joy all the time. And those who have been here understand that when I'm talking about joy, I'm talking about a communion with spirit. I'm talking about a communion with the divine that old idea that we have about vibrating at the speed of the divine, revealing the divinity within us. That is a communion that we have. That's joy. Our spiritual connection to life. Another way to be in state is physiology of body. How you stand the sound you surround yourself with, the exercise you do with your body. That's the physiology. If I walk around like this all the time, you think I'm going to be empowering myself? No. It's this. Just out. Remember the story I told you about the whole stance, the, the Wonder Woman or Superman stance. And that's something you can do when you're going in for an interview it, whether it's live or whether it's in person or it's, or it's on Zoom or something, you can do that before the interview starts. Go into the restroom or go off camera or something and create that stance. Be there. Be present. That changes. Your physiology of the body changes the rest of what's going on in your mind. Focus on what you want. There's another one. Focus equals feeling how we visualize, how we envision, even stronger, how we envision these ideas are important and brings us into a state when we experience what we have decided to demonstrate into our lives through all of our senses that empowers that vision, that purpose. State inspires story, the number two. Why do we want it? The purpose. And what language are we using? That puts us in a state. What are you saying to yourself? That's part of the action. You want to take action? Then what are the words? You know, when I write these affirmations, which I'm now going to start calling incantations, because they bring magic into our lives. And sometimes it seems very magical. And sometimes it seems very miracle but these affirmations, these incantations, put us in a state. That's action. The words we use. Ernest Holmes wrote in Journey into Life, Work without vision is drudgery, but vision without work is self-deception. The well-balanced person can walk with his head in the clouds and still keep his feet solidly planted on the ground. Faith 
and work are ineffective when separated. You know, meditating is good, praying is good, a vision board is fun and useful. But now it's time for getting up off our meditative, prayerful, faithful asses and take action. Jesus, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Dr. King, they didn't just pray. They didn't just speak. They took action both on and in their faith, simultaneously sometimes being afraid. You may get afraid. You're stepping out of your, uh, your comfort zone, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you, it's okay to be afraid. Having courage means taking that being afraid and stepping through it with clear and present certainty to be mavericks and getting the party started. There's a gentleman named uh, Bayard Rustin who uh, was an organizer and strategist with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he said, the proof that one believes is in action. Mavericks take their minutes of prayer and meditation, which is getting disconnected from the facts and stepping into the truth, which is breaking the bind of the 3D world and stepping into the 5D world, imagining their next now with feeling and all their senses, experience it in, experiencing it in mind and thus body. You know, interestingly, I was talking about the philo uh, physiology. Did you know that your body doesn't know the difference between experiencing something and the thought of something. The change in your biology, your chemistry, your hormones and genes, they'll be the same by having an inner event as it is an outer event. So I want to go to the song for a couple of minutes. Um, in the song, they say, obstacles are inefficient. Follow your intuition. Free your inner soul and break away from tradition. Get stupid. I'm sure there were several people who were like, get stupid when they sang that a few times. What is Rev. J talking about? Get stupid. Being a maverick means going back to square one, going back to kindergarten, going back to who the heck you are. Stepping back into that and reminding yourself, revealing that divine in you. That's what spiritual practice is at least partially, if not fully, about. Revealing the divinity in you. Communing with spirit and reminding yourself. And sometimes we have to get stupid to do it. Another lyric said, burn it till it's burned out. Turn it till it's turned out. Act up from northwest, east, south. It's telling you that repetition leads to the mother of skills. Repetition is the mother of skills. Practice, practice, practice. Say it till you spray it. See it till you be it. Act it till you crack it, fact it, and unpack it. And movement is the key in body, mind, language, the Wonder Woman, Superman stance. Um, you hear your uh, BS going on in your head that you used to believe in. Tell it to shut up and talk yourself blue into imagining that which you want to manifest. The universe expands, my friends, and we expand with it. We expand to continue happiness in the service to the highest good that we are bringing into our lives. So let me conclude with a couple of things. First, from um, Ernest Holmes in his book, Philosophy of Jesus, of Yeshua. He said, uh, though faith tie your mind back to the mind of God, and in action, live as though you were guided by a supreme intelligence. That supreme intelligence is you. The mindful maverick prays to set their intention, meditates for divine discernment, and then takes action. And repeats this cycle over and over and over again until it shows up. Uses the affirmations, not just as statements, but as incantations with magical scientific effects. 
because they will and they can be and they they are in the song it says lose control of body and soul don't move too fast people just take it slow don't get ahead just jump into it so today i'm asking you to create a compelling future with language physiology and focus stay true hearted and authentic believe in who you are your vision whatever that is parking space to peace of mind and your power the power that is within you because of who you are challenge the status quo in your mind in your body in your spirit with strong imaginative convictions and be courageous even when afraid it's okay to be afraid just use your emotional quotient over your IQ, your intelligent quotient. Because feelings and imagination are what's going to empower your intention, your purpose. Use your superpowers, your intuition, your talents, your spiritual tools, your imagination and identity to compel your future every day and then get out there and walk the talk. Do what is in your power in physical action to bring that demonstration, to bring that manifestation into your life. You know, you're always creating every moment of every day. So be creative. Let's get it started and thrive. Thank you so much. Namaste.